My name's Ryan, and I'll be your pilot today. Boys and girls, the New York Jets have a brand new edge rusher. They make a trade for Hassan Reddick from the Philadelphia Eagles, bringing in our replacement for our own Bryce Huff, who wound up going to the Eagles. Maybe a little bit of mixed feelings. Pretty excited. This guy's a stud edge rusher. Maybe not the way I would have preferred the course of action to go. But Hassan Reddick's going to join a filthy defense, and the Jets are going to have a ton of pressure coming off the edge. This came by way of Rappaport, I think was the first one that said it. I saw this tweet from Schefter. Uh, Eagles are sending edge rusher Hassan Reddick to New York for a conditional 2026 third round pick that would be a second round pick if he gets 67.5% playing time, playing 67.5% of the snaps this season, or has 10 or more sacks. Uh, so look, overall... Trade compensation-wise, third-round pick in 2026, he's on a one-year contract. He's Now, unless they've they've said something different, I, one report had the Jets, like, saying, or saying that the Jets were going to re-sign him to a different contract. The other one says he's playing on his own current contract, so I'm going to assume it's the only current contract that he's currently on, the one that we got from the Eagles, so you guys can let me know if that's wrong <laughs> in the chat. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this as well. So for me, if it's one year, $16 million, I'm not going to lie. I, I, You got to think they're probably going to rework it a little bit, maybe add some void years or something like that, because $16 million for one year of an edge rusher feels like a, a very panicky type move to me. But at the same time, you're getting the production in the now season. Joe Douglas, Robert Sala may not be here in 2026 to feel the repercussions of this pick anyway, if it doesn't all work out. So... As far as Hassan Reddick versus Bryce Huff, you're getting you're going from a 24, 25 year old in Huff to a 29 year old in Reddick. Reddick's a little bit better in terms of run defense, I guess. But as far as edge rushing presence goes, sacks, the 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 actual accumulation of stats is in favor of Hassan Reddick. 50.5 sacks over the course of the last few seasons, uh, I believe it was. Let's see, I think I have it right here. Yeah, 50.5 sacks over the course of the last four seasons. Um, solid, rock solid pressure rate, really good over the course of the last four years. I think he's at a 13% pressure rate when he rushes the edge, rushes off the edge on pass rush downs. So, or pass rush snaps, I guess not too shabby. I'll take this. This is, uh, solid. I'll, I'll admit I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> I really wish we had kept Bryce Huff and not given up a third round pick, potentially a second round pick. Now, I don't think he's going to get 67.5% of the snaps given our defensive line rotation. That was obviously the the issue that, that Huff had with this particular amount of snaps. Reddick, he doesn't have any say in it. He got traded on his contract, so you don't like the percentage snaps you get? Tough cookies, doesn't matter. Uh, as far as 10 sacks, I think he's going to get that. I hope he gets that. We got 10 sacks, out, 10 sacks out of Bryce Huff last year, and we had a terrible offense. You're telling me with Aaron Rodgers coming back, no matter who's on the edge, everyone's going to feast a little bit more. So I do think this is ultimately going to end up being a 2026 second round pick. And it's going to be, you know, maybe a little bit, you know, easier to swallow in the event that he leaves. Because if he leaves, the Jets get a conditional pick in 2026. So there's a chance if he balls out and he leaves, signs a big contract elsewhere, it's a little bit more of a washout in terms of trade. And you're just taking on the contract for the one season. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say in here. Uh, Anzi says, go Jets. Mitt Flair says, woo. <laughs> Randy says, let's F and go. Dakota, tremendous trade, baby. Jay-Z Jets says, yeah, baby. Squirmy Weasel, let's F and go. Craig says, I'm personally waiting to hear Green Bean's next Huff rant. I'll be honest. I, I definitely wish we kept Huff, but I'm not going to be upset. The, the move already happened in terms of Huff leaving, I've kind of come to grips with that. At least we got a, a really good replacement, like an elite replacement. I'm okay with this. Mike, extend JD. Do you, do you think there was any trade consideration on the Jets saying like, okay, we won't go after you on tampering charges, but we want to uh, to get a better trade for Hassan Reddick. Maybe that, maybe that was in the, uh, in the stacks. 
Uh, Jerome Strax, let's have him go. Harry W. says, look at us winning the offseason. Dakota says, extend JD four to five more years. Best defense, New York Jets, 100%. We're going to be the best defense, you know, bar none. Just give us an offense here. Extend JD. Riedel says, they likely to rework the deal. All right, cool. That would make me feel a little bit better. One year, $16 million doesn't, doesn't make me feel great in terms of our cap space. <laughs> $16 million cap hit uh, is a little rough. So I'm, I'm glad if they're going to rework it. Uh, offense at 10 is a lock. I, I think it was a lock before this, but Ryan, <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, Danny says, yes. Dakota, number one defense. Tony to GM says, Ryan, if the Jets don't win a Super Bowl next year, whoops, let me move this above here. Uh, if the Jets don't win a Super Bowl next year, you are looking at a complete rebuild in 2026. The 2026 cap is an absolute disaster. Um, yeah, cap's going to keep going up. I'm not, I'm not terribly concerned about this. NY Flight Jets Talk, what's up? If you didn't check out his video earlier with Schefter, make sure you go check that out. Robert Sal, I did it again, Ryan. I'm too good. <laughs> Thank you, Robert Sala. Jerome says, let's and go. It's 2026. Crazy good trade. Can't be upset with it. Not really, at least. Jay says, let's go Jets. Kevin Callahan says, per Ian Rappaport, Reddick, new team, new contract. Now, I've seen that. I've seen different reports. I saw the, the Rappaport one. I hope it's a new contract. I don't like one year, $16 million. But if you're going to sign him to uh, a deal, maybe you get him around $11, $12 million. On a multi-year deal? Be feeling a little bit more comfortable with that. That'd be kind of nice. Jet says, just got him to sign to a new contract. Oh, get him to new, sign to a new contract. We'll be all good. I agree. Robert Sala, Will, is going to go off this year. This is a great person to learn behind. You got to have Will McDonald learn behind someone. Someone who's been around the league, a few different teams, has some experience that he can pull from. I like this. WM. Where are all the don't give up future draft capital and mortgage the future guys? Well, it's not as bad because it's 2026. I mean, I still don't love giving up a second round pick when you could have just kept an in-house guy. Like, I think Huff was set to have way more than 10 sacks next year with a good offense. I would have transitioned tagged Huff at the very least. I think that was, uh, you know, we, we flubbed it a little bit, but that's all right. I'll take it. Uh, just so you know, Ryan, this is the former NY Sports MC. Hey, what's up, Mike? I didn't realize that was you. I'm glad to know now. Glad to have you in here. Just win Jets. Next moves, Justin Simmons, restructure JFM, Corey Davis, Donovan Smith. I'll say no to Donovan Smith right now. He would take valuable snaps away from uh, Carter Warren. I don't particularly want to do that. Justin Simmons, I'm on board for. Restructuring JFM, I like that. Uh, Corey Davis, I, you guys know I love Corey Davis. I would love to bring back some Corey Davis. Cameron says this is a huge trade. NY native, it's really good trade and fills a need. It does. We don't use any capital from this season. This trade was 10% JD, 90% lace sauce. <laughs> Jared says this team is going to be fun to watch this year. If Reddick doesn't sign a new deal, the Jets will get a comp pick anyway. That's if he signs a big deal next year. And then you get a, you know, a comp pick in 2026. So that's the, uh, the trade-off. I still think I'd, I want him to sign to a new deal. I don't like $16 million cap pick. I'm not a, not a huge fan of that. Um, but if you can get him to sign a new deal... Lower that cap hit. I'm all uh, I'm all in. Kay Shepard says offensive line wide receiver or Brock Bowers with the 10th overall pick. I'm team weapon at 10 overall. I understand if you want to go offensive line, I won't be upset with that, but I'm team weapon. Odunze, well, assuming neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. are not going to be there. I'm more in the Odunze Bowers camp. Uh, won't be upset if they go with an offensive lineman though. MH, W. M. Wow, words, letters are hard right now for Ryan. Uh, ah, I wasn't talking about Huff. Obviously, they should have tagged him rather than trading for Reddick, but the point was everybody's always long, everybody always something when you mention trading for dudes. I don't know if I know what you're, always loans when you're, I don't know what you're, moans when you're trading for dudes. Uh, look, you can trade for a lot worse people. Third round pick isn't necessarily a guaranteed lock to be a hit, and it's a pick in two years from now. Go all in on winning right now. It's two year window. Make it happen. I hope they align his contract with two years. That would be uh, kind of nice. I don't really want a one-year rental. 
Dio24, offensive linemen are like baseball starters. Can't have enough. Best available offensive lineman at 10. Yeah, look, whoever we draft at 10, if it's going to be an offensive lineman, like uh, let's say it's Fuaga, Fontenau, Latham, whoever you you, you want to plug in, they're going to see snaps this year. I'm I'd, I would imagine it's going to be a guard tackle type hybrid, and I think you're going to get someone in that realm of, uh, you know, look, ABT's not guaranteed to start a whole heck of a lot of games. Tyron Smith's going to miss a few games if history sh serves correct. Morgan Moses coming off a of shoulder surgery, only five and a half million dollars. He could potentially be a backup if you get a really good offensive lineman and you want to have the best five in front of you. Simpson's on a two-year deal, but it's really a one-year contract, so you could always replace the the left guard if you had to. I think if you draft an offensive lineman at 10, as much as it seems like it's a non-starter, best case scenario, I think the person would definitely see enough snaps. And uh, I don't know. But I, for me, I think knowing that Mike Williams is not going to be ready for the start of or not going to be ready for training camp. And then, you know, how long does it take him to to build chemistry with Aaron Rodgers once the season actually starts? I tend to lean weapon more than offensive line, but the draft is deep in weapon as opposed to offensive line. That kind of falls off after the second round. We don't have a second round pick. So uh, I understand it either way. Charles says, now, how about signing Boyd so they can grab a tackle in the draft? I like Boyd. I feel like Boyd's almost a little redundant. Um, but, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't be upset with it. Mikey Mouse says blue really likes Latham. He's usually right about offensive line. How would you feel about his name called at number 10? I'd be fine with that. I like Latham. I think, uh, a guard tackle hybrid is definitely the, the route that I'm kind of leaning in terms of offensive line. Cameron says, what would a new contract with him look like? I, hopefully a lot less than 16 million. I'll be honest. <laughs> if it's going to be around this number, we should have re-signed Huff. But uh, hopefully it's not uh, not too much. Mike says, Quinnen played 68.5% of the snaps. JJ, 65.8% of the snaps as the top two. I think we can keep his snaps down low enough to keep that keep it a third. Well, you're not... I, I don't care about the snap percentage. I don't think he's going to hit the snap percentage. I just want him to hit the sack number. I'm, I hope we give up a second round pick because I want more sacks than 10 out of, uh, out of Riddick. The, uh, the percentage thing, I just I don't think he's going to actually hit it unless J.J. or Will McDonald end up getting hurt. Then you'll see more snaps from Riddick. Uh, the last few years, he has played about 70% of the snaps for Philadelphia from what I was seeing. I think it was, let's see, 74, 74, 83, 79 were his last four years of snaps going dating back to Arizona, Carolina, and then the last two years in Philly. Uh, but I get, again, I don't think he's going to hit that snap percentage with us here. I do hope he hits the sack percentage. So I do want this to be a second round pick that we end up giving up because that means we got some good value out of it. Mikey Mal says the thing about Latham is he fits the new run scheme or at least the scheme we are thinking of shifting to. Based on what Hackett said, we're going to run through Brees Hall. Mo Moses, number what, eight tackle in, in run blocking. AVT, stout run blocker from the guard position. I hope we we lean on Hall a lot. Not to mention the the new no drop hip no hip drop tackle means you're not going to have lighter corners tackling guys uh, that might be a little more shifty or a little bit bigger. It's going to be a little bit harder to bring Brees down. Broadway Vinny says we have said this for years. Take the sure good guy instead of the lottery ticket draft pick. Good move, JD. Uh, it's a good move in the sense that your third round pick in 2026 isn't guaranteed to be a, a player that's going to impact you anyway. And it's a pick that JD is not going to be around here for. This is kind of more of the way I thought Douglas would operate, trying to, to steal from tomorrow to make sure the now is, is as good as it possibly can be. Maybe that means we're open to trading some other draft capital for, for other positions of need, potentially. I still feel like, you know, maybe a big time wide receiver <laughs> or, or a trade up or something like that. Who knows? But it, it's nice to see that the, uh, the picks are up for grabs. Nick says, Ryan, I'm all about it. Pull a Rams, F them picks. Yeah, you got to hit on the later round picks. As long as you hit on later round picks, F the picks. Doesn't matter. Eric says, this means we can draft defensive tackle at 10, right? Eric, no. <laughs> Please, no. Freedom House, why not pay Huff and not give up a pick? Yeah, that's. I think that's where all Jet fans probably are. Yeah, I think the way Douglas handled the whole situation with Huff is, is a pretty big flub up. As far as... Uh, the other things it would look, it could have been tagging Huff for slightly more, and then he walks. Because if Huff wanted the the snap percentage and we weren't giving it to him, then he was going to sign elsewhere anyway. 
I don't know. Hopefully we see a new contract for Riddick and it's not not as big as it currently is right now. Mikey Mal says, is what Joe Blewett said. Some of the offensive line acquisitions make it seem like we are shifting from a zone blocking scheme to something else. Latham is a better fit than Alt or a few others. I think we're definitely going to go for a power run scheme. You're going to run it through Brees Hall. You're going to run play action. You're going to bomb the ball downfield when your opportunities present themselves, whether it's 50-50 balls or 70-30 balls, as, as Sal would call it for Mike Williams, Garrett Wilson getting open. I do think uh, they could definitely go offensive linemen, but I, we also do have the offensive linemen in-house right now to run the scheme. So whether or not they decide to double down on offensive line to, to follow that or go with another you know position player that might see the field a little bit more uh, initially is, is yet to be seen. Freedom House says he asked to be traded because he wanted a new deal, so I don't think he wants less. Uh, it might be that he wants more guaranteed money. I don't think the $16 million was a guaranteed $16 million. I think it was only if he was on the roster at $16 million. He's got like a $14 million base, and I think it's a prorated bonus or a bonus, roster bonus maybe, or some type of bonus that's like just under $2 million. So uh, going to be a lot. Going to be a lot. Uh, if he wants a new contract, how much are we paying for it? That's my next thing. If it's more than $16 million a year, I uh, may be a little less enthusiastic. Mikey Mouse says, Ryan, it's 67.5% and 10 sacks. Is that right? And has more than 10 sacks. Okay, that's not bad. If it's an and, I'm good with that. So he won't hit it. That's pretty nice. Uh, to report if he'd hit both, he can have 25 sacks. If it's at 67%, it's still a third. All right, that makes me feel uh, a little bit better. A little bit better. Billy says, Eagles fans are raging over the trade. They would have gotten a third round compensatory pick for Redick anyway, so they might get nothing for the trade ultimately. He's in the last year of his contract though, so they would have had, it would have been a 2026 third round pick for them if he signed elsewhere. Um, although I guess the <laughs> 2026 third round pick that they're getting anyway, they would have gotten that regardless. So, oh man, I don't know. I think they definitely could have got more than that. Matthew says, what do you think about moving record fullback? I've been saying it all offseason. I'm definitely down for that. Freedom says, Latham has legs like Trex. He's got tree trunks, I would say, is what his legs are like. Mike E says, I would love to trade down maybe to the Broncos Raiders if Drake May falls. Could you imagine if Drake May falls? I can't imagine the fourth quarterback falling further than the Giants. I feel like we're going to have quarterback five sitting there at number 10. So if you can convince someone to come up for quarterback five, whether that's Penix or Knicks, I'm down to trade down. I like trading down more. Yoshi says Reddick is a little more versatile than Huff. Yeah, a little bit. He's, I think that, I think Huff was like a, I have his pro football focus grades here. I don't remember what Huff's PFF grade was for, uh, for run defense. I think Huff was in like the fifties, if I'm not mistaken. So sixties, it's an upgrade. Pass rush roughly about the same this guy was an all pro two years ago you're projecting with huff where he could be with reddick you kind of know where he is and you just hope he doesn't you know go go the opposite direction at this point either way i gotta change this i have or it's actually an and on here so let's do and 10 sex that makes it a little bit better a little bit better i do like that Matt Curtis says, let's go. D-line is now stacked. Let's go Jets. This D-line is going to feast. Quinnen coming up the gut with a, with a Kinlaw as well. Then you got either JJ or Will McDonald or Reddick coming off the edge. Yo, get out of here. <laughs> Quarterback's not going to have any time to go. Absolutely nutty. Damon says, Reddick is one of, the, one of the best guys. He's uh, number four in sacks over the last four seasons. Oh, <laughs> last 50.5 years, last 50 point. Okay, let me change that. Man, I'm trying to get stuff ready in a hurry. And uh, let's see, fourth and sacks. Boom. Do this, 54. Last four years. That's what that meant to say. Words are hard. Uh, Billy coming and says, Jets basically swap Huff for Riddick and save $2.5 million a year in cap. They could have signed, uh, they could sign Connor McGovern for that. Yeah. Look, I, I do like where Huff was going, but Huff sounds like he was probably burnt on the Jets based on how he handled everything. Uh, so I don't know if he would have come back and signed the deal that he ended up signing with the Eagles for the Jets anyway. 
So getting someone of equal or maybe better caliber pass rush or maybe has been a steadier know what you're going to get out of him as opposed to maybe projection from Huff, maybe you like that. I'm on board. NY Jets superfan, let's go! Yoshi 2026 is far away. Yeah, we shouldn't even worry about that. Can't worry about three years from now or two years from now. Daniel, I don't think Huff wanted to stay and play less. JD didn't want to pay the cost. I don't blame him when you think of having to sign JJ Sauce and Garrett Wilson in the future. Well, if it's true and they're trying to re-sign Redick right now, if that's the case, then I don't know if it necessarily matters. I just don't think Huff wanted to be here. Uh... All we need now is Bowers around one, wide receiver in the third, and a guard in the fourth, and Quandre Diggs. That would be wild. Red John says, restructuring coming? I hope so. I hope we get a restructuring deal. Broadway Vinny says, so my brother is a huge Eagles fan, like us, to the Jets, and he said he was looking for a 20 to $25 million a year deal. If that's the case, this is a terrible trade. <laughs> I hope that's not true. I really hope that's not true. I would not be happy with that. Daniel says, if we pick Bowers, I'll lose my mind. I think we should trade back and get another wide receiver and offensive line. You should not lose your mind if you get Brock Bowers. They just changed the rules. It's going to make him an even better weapon than he would have been at number 10. I think Bowers is going to be the pick. That's been my, my stance for a while. Not that I would take him at 10 overall. Uh, not that I necessarily want that as my number one overall you know, selection at 10, but I do think that's going to be it, and I'm going to be perfectly fine with it. Philly says, we offered him 18 to 20 a year. He wants 25 million plus on a multi-year deal with loads of guaranteed. You're not going to be happy when you see the price you extend him for. Well, it's either going to be we extend him and I'm going to be really mad because we should have kept Bryce off or we don't extend him. I'm going to be mad that it's a $16 million one year contract and we let him walk. <laughs> like that, that's the stuff I don't really like. So we'll see what it ends up being. I don't like $16 million a year on a one-year contract for him. I would have retained Huff at that point. Sports Frenzy says, we will never give Reddick that. If he leaves in free agency, we will get a comp pick anyway. Um, Matt Curtis says, extend JD. He is making all the moves we need. Now it's up to Salah to get us wins. So we save two and a half million dollars instead of having Huff. And then we're probably going to let him walk. That's what it sounds like people are, are talking about. Aaron from Australia says, defense is set. I would use all our picks on offense. I would have done that without this move. <laughs> Ryan says, Eagles have two second rounders. What's the likelihood the Jets trade down to 22 if the Eagles like a cornerback at 10? That's the most likely scenario, uh, in my opinion. If the Jets want to try and get a second round pick, if the Eagles coming all the way up to get the corner they want for just a second round pick, it would be eating a ton of value for the Jets. I think they have two thirds as well. So I don't know if maybe you can swing like a second and a third. But I like the idea of moving back for a second. And if you're in of the mindset that you're taking a, a quote unquote depth player uh, at number 10, then maybe you feel a little bit better taking a Marius Mims or a uh, maybe a, a fought new falls that far down. Maybe a, like a, a Guyton, something along those lines. Mike says, do you think they could also slide JJ inside on true passing downs to have McDonald, JJ, Q, and Reddick? I hadn't thought about JJ going inside. I don't think that's where I'd necessarily want him to go. But if you want all your best pass rushers on the field, maybe maybe that's something they consider. I feel like JJ's so good outside. I'd be I'd be a little bummed if we saw him move inside. Blitzcrew says Huff didn't want to come back. He wanted more snaps, more money. Love the trade. 2026. Come on. Great move, JD. Milk thumbs, people. Be people, hit those milk thumbs. Give me some likes on there uh, if you're enjoying the stream. As far as uh, Huff, yeah, look, he didn't want to come back. It would have been a franchise tag at $22 million or whatever the, the number was or a transition tag and then trade. Um, I, that's what I would have. I still would have done that, honestly. As far as the, the Reddick contract, one year, $16 million. How much is he going to want? Is he going to be disgruntled that we don't give him a new contract? Or do we give him the new contract? It's going to be bigger than I necessarily want. We'll see. We got a stud edge rusher, though. We'll say that much. Alex says, Woody, we need offense, offense, offense. That's where we're headed. We're headed. Even though we're making a lot of moves on defense right now, I wouldn't be too concerned. Billy says, teams that were thinking the Jets defense would top off after uh, drop off after losing Huff. Well, not really. Yeah, I would have liked to have had Clowney. Clowney for two years, 24 million total is that would have been the, the move I would have preferred, honestly. Um, Phil Adams says this move made 10 even more exciting. How so? 
Did you think defense might come into play at 10? I want to know. <laughs> Mikey says, I had a dream where the Vikings gave up 11-23. JD called the Vikings and said, I have a deal you'll have to beat if you want your quarterback at our pick. And they gave up. The yeah, Mike, that's not happening. <laughs> They're going to trade up to number four. That's a lock. I've been I've been saying that since they made their uh, their trade. Infinite Reddick is different, better than Huff. He is better than Huff. the The clowny deal would have been much better, in my opinion. WM says Bowers is going to the Chargers with Harbaugh at five. Maybe. I hope that's the case because then a receiver falls to us at ten. I'm very much Team Bowers ahead of the Jets. I'm fine if we take him, but I very much want to go ahead. Mike says, if we don't re-sign Reddick, we could get a 2026 comp third and get him for a one-year deal next to nothing, uh, assuming we don't sign any free agents in 2025. That's uh, that's where that comes in. Freedom House. Garrett Wilson, Neighbors, Williams, Brees, and A-Rod at the helm. Even Hackett couldn't screw that up. Neighbors might not fall past five. <laughs> if if uh, It depends how the quarterbacks look. I think the quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, four, but I don't think Neighbors gets past the Giants at six. I would be very surprised. After running a 4-3-40 at his pro day, that would stun me if he got that far. Uh, Prestige, Ryan, notice how the internet's mood is starting to change. Slowly sounds like more people are starting to fear this Jets team. I'm not so sure the Reddick move does that for me. I think that's more the Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses acquisitions more than, than Reddick. I feel like we're at kind of a net um even on 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 defense i don't know if you bring in a safety maybe that that tips the scales a little bit more but i think this signing is is more of like a replacement for huff as opposed to like a, a getting maybe better than huff starrock says would you want the jets to sign isaiah simmons great linebacker depth would fit our scheme it's like the the argument for jamal adams right like bringing in that linebacker safety kind of hybrid I wouldn't be against it. I want more of a safety and let our linebackers kind of run around. We got Zaire Barnes in last year's draft. We have Surratt. We got a few guys kind of penciled in behind him. I'm kind of cool with that. Uh, they have zero receivers now. We're talking about the Chargers. I think the Chargers are more like they trade down. I think they want to trade down. If not, they're going to take a wide receiver. I would be a little surprised if it was Bowers at, at five. Wimmy says now we drop in the draft now we drop down in the draft and address offensive line and wide receiver i think that was going to be the plan regardless of signing reddick i don't know if reddick necessarily necessarily changes our draft plan moving forward um and then what is a team coming up for right that's the biggest thing what is a team coming up for on that deal billy says the contract is 14.5 million isn't it uh that's his base salary he still has a bonus so it's 16 million dollars one year 16 is what we wind up getting him for Freedom says, are we all in or not? Trade up. Depends what the cost is, right? I wouldn't be against trading up. Oregon says, if Reddick walks, we get a comp pick. Low cost move by JD. It's it's a high cost cap move. Low cost trade move. Daniel says, I think Ruckert still has the ability to be a number one tight end, but he hasn't been able to show up, uh, show it because Zach is our quarterback and the offensive coordinator is horrible. Uh, it's possible. I mean, I, I really liked Michael Carter, and I didn't. Ha I had that was the, the opinion. Oh, you don't have to draft a running back high, and then we got Brees Hall. So I don't think you necessarily have to think that way if it's a if it's a strong upgrade. Mikey says I wouldn't have taken Bowers at ten until the new hip drop rule was put into place. He's two inches shorter and twenty five pounds lighter than Gronk, but I still think NFL DBs will have an issue. Well, he was I think he was number one in forced broken tackles or forced missed tackles in the NFL or uh, in college last year for Bowers. And I do think this new hip drop ban is going to make the tight end position even stronger uh, and heavy running backs or strong running backs even even stronger. It plays into the Jets' hand. Uh, Philly Jake says, he signed with the Jets to get extended ASAP. You're not getting him on a one-year rental. His agent isn't dumb. You guys didn't... He wasn't a free agent, though. You traded him. So he doesn't have a say in it unless the Jets want to extend him. Right? Like, he wasn't... He, correct me if I'm wrong, right? I'm pretty sure pretty sure that's the case wm says they had johnson uh johnston and bowers as a good receiver uh no johnston's a bad receiver johnston's not a good receiver he's been underwhelming as a number one overall pick or number one uh draft pick i think that is a bad move uh to rely on him for the chargers 
WM says they had no receivers last year because Allen and Williams were both out virtually the entire season. Quentin Johnson sucks, as Prestige says. <laughs> I'm on the same page uh, with you. Philly Jake says also Reddick was toxic in the locker room the second half of the year and didn't have one sack in the last five weeks when we needed him the most. Glad he's gone. That doesn't make me feel good. I mean, look, I'll be honest. You guys definitely got the better end of this deal. A 24, 25-year-old edge rusher at Bryce Huff for just a little bit more than what Reddick is. This is not a, a big win for the Jets. It's definitely a, a net sideways. And if they sign him to a bigger contract or it stays at one year, $16 million, I'm I'm not super thrilled. <laughs> like, I'll be honest. It's a one year like, oh no, we screwed up. We had to get an edge rusher. At Two years, 24 million for Clowney. I would have rather paid him two years, 28 million or, or something along those lines. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Wild Wave says Edge uh, Eagles uh, have no thirds and the value doesn't add up with just a second. They have to give up more. Yeah, but if the Jets want a second, they might eat some of the value to it, make sure they get that second. WM says wide out or Bowers for the Chargers. Daniel says, also love the show. You and O'Leary are killing it in the Jets coverage. Wish I could go to the draft party by live in Minnesota. Keep up the good work. Daniel, thank you so much. Much appreciate Hit that like button, boys and girls. I'm excited to talk to O'Leary and Greenbean. Get their thoughts on this as well. Dennis says, trade up for neighbors. How much you giving up? Not against it. Just how much you giving up? You got to get into the top five. He's probably not falling beyond the, uh, the Giants at six. Kev, what, how much we gave up for Edge? We gave up a third round pick in 2026 if he has, uh, that could become a second, if he has 67.5% of the snaps and 10 sacks. Broadway Vinny says, good thing we got a good player and good teams find a way to keep the players and make the cap work. Are you insinuating that Bryce Huff was not a good player? We'll say that. Uh, NY Jets Superfan says, Ryan Reddick is way better than Clowney. I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying for the money and the run defense. I just think it, it would have been a, a better net positive, I think, because Reddick is kind of what I'm hoping uh, McDonald's going to be. Like for McDonald, I'd rather have brought back Huff. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. WM, a little nerd emotional about Bowers, man. What a weirdo. Man, WM, really fired up in the chat over there. SBC says Jets are really reaching for a Super Bowl here, no doubt. Yeah, they have to. They got it. You only got Aaron Rodgers for like two more years. You have to do it when you're all in now. Mike Mouse says Neighbors is going to the Chargers because Harrison is going to the Cardinals. Unless him not going to workouts works against him, they just got rid of Allen and Williams. So I do think number four is going to be a quarterback. I think the Cardinals are going to trade out and they're going to keep rebuilding their team. It's going to be the Vikings that come up for that quarterback. That means the Chargers are going to be sitting at number five and they're going to take the best wide receiver, whether that be Marvin Harrison Jr. or Neighbors. And then I think the Giants, since they've missed the top four quarterbacks, I don't see them going quarterback five at number six. I think they'll take Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., whichever one's there for them at six. Seven's still going to be alt. Eight's going to be defense. Nine, I don't know what's going to happen. Jets are going to go uh, wherever they go at 10. Freedom House says, I agree with you. Clowney was the deal I, or keeping Huff uh, if he would have stayed for the same deal he signed. I, yeah, I'm curious to see if the if the play time was really the biggest issue for Huff. I feel like we kind of burnt the bridge on him over the last year. Uh, Clowney's the one I would have liked to have had. Garbage Time Fantasy Football says, we now have five all pros on defense. I'm going to lose it if we get neighbors, but I think the smart move is to trade down offensive tackle round one, wide receiver round two, interior offensive line round three, Washington, Malik Washington, round four. I would agree. It's just a matter of uh, who's coming up and how far down are you going to have to fall? because you're, you're talking about quarterback five. Quarterback five is who they'd be possibly coming up for. Kane says, draft Roma Odunze. I'm a big Odunze guy. I'd be down with Odunze if we can get him. What about Jalen Polk? I'd be all right with that if he makes it to the third. Daniel Berry Sports, yo, what's good, dude? Glad to have you in here. Prestige says, imagine thinking Quentin Johnson and Joshua Palmer are better than Neighbors or Odunze. They're definitely not. If that's what WM's saying, that's silly. That is silly. You are silly. <laughs> WM, I would definitely take uh, Neighbors or Odunze over both those receivers. 
Mike Malice says, oh, Dunze is a redundant skill set with Williams, but you would replace him next year and he's going to be good. Yeah, I, I'm not looking at Mike Williams for more than this year. Let's see. Smothering defense, top 10 offense. Jets going to win a Super Bowl this year. Maybe next year too. That's That was the plan. You don't trade for Rodgers and not try to go for a Super Bowl for the next two years. Johnny Bravo says, what a dumb move. Now we lose a second or third round pick and could have just paid Huff. That's if Huff wanted to stay. That's really the, the big thing here. If Huff wanted to leave, he was really going to leave no matter what. Although you would think the Jets could have at least traded him for Redick and not given up a pick on the transition tag. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know. Philly Jake says, it's not the case. He wants $25 million a year, and the Jets are willing to get close to that number, apparently. Or they're willing to have him at this one-year $16 million contract. I think that's one or the other. Yoshi says, I'm optimistic, but I can't get too excited because the MetLife turf will find a way to ruin everything. Yeah, they ruin everything. Bobby B says, huge pickup, F Clowny. Screw <laughs> Screw Clowny, right? He just wanted to go home to Carolina. Mike E says, you sound like a bitter Philly fan. Talking about Philly Jake. Philly Jake giving us some insight, though. No sacks the final five weeks of the season for Redick. Wants $25 million a year. Was a locker room headache the final second half of the season. Interesting. 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 Not things I necessarily love to hear. WM says, Devontae Adams went for a second. Tyreek. Fifth. What, are, what the heck are you talking about? Fifth, fifth. Ebo said, okay, I don't know. Oh, maybe you're talking about where they were selected in the draft? Sure. But if you tell anyone what any of those players would have been, they'd be much higher. Um, <laughs> Philly Jake says, I'm a bit salty, not going to lie. He's a local guy from Camden. Wanted him to stay. He didn't want a discount. He wants Miles Garrett type money. Hopefully the Jets don't give him that. I don't, I don't, I would not endorse that. I'd be a little upset if we did that. Duncan says, Jets will take on 14.5. Uh, 14.5 million of Reddick's contract in total compensation in 2024, while the Eagles will foot the bill on his $1 million roster bonus that was due earlier this month. That's good. That's cool. Because over the cap had it differently. Over the cap had it at $16 million. Mike Bowles says, I think I'm team trade down to pick up a second and grab offensive line in the first and a top wide receiver in the second. If Bowers falls to 10, I won't be mad if they grab him. Some guy, Jets screwed up Jefferson, too. They wanted him back, took too long to match his offer. Apparently, they didn't see his text, I think is what it was. They took too long to respond. It was something stupid. Let's see. Philly Jake says, no lie, bro. Not happy with the return, but we would have lost him for nothing anyway. He wasn't a great locker room asset. This frees up cap space, at least. We got Huff instead for cheap. Yeah, I like Huff for for the money. If if Reddick really wants twenty to twenty five million dollars a year, that doesn't make me feel great. <laughs> I would definitely keep him on the one year deal. Tony the GM, thirty five million. I don't think I understand what this means. Uh, Daniel says, neighbors, I'm giving up next year's second and this year's first and fourth to the Giants if they take it. I I wouldn't if I was the Giants. That wouldn't be the trade I would do. WM, apologize, man. Apologies, man. Dude came at me in some weird way. I, I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. You guys are nuts in the chat. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to call in, let's do some call-ins. I could do some of this. Where's my uh, call-in? Bam, bam, QR code. Dropping the link in the live chat as well. I want to hear some of your thoughts and see what you guys think of the Hassan Reddick trade. Are you happy with it? Did you want to see something different go on? Let me know in the live chat. And let your voice heard in the call-in. Tigo says, boys! What's good, Tigo? Good to have you in here. Duncan says, Huff didn't want to play in New York. Let's see if Huff plays more snaps if he can sustain a level of play. Going to be interesting to see. Going to be interesting to see. All right, boys and girls, live uh, call-in show number, call-in show link is pinned to the live chat if you guys would like to call in. 
We're going to go over to our first caller. We've got Abe on the line. Abe, how you doing, brother? What's up, Ryan? Uh, sorry, I'm just going to be out of the uh, view for a sec because I just got out of the shower. Um, That's all yeah, good. Just don't super, pan super down. Hype. Like, <laughs> dude, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not naked. I'm not naked. I just don't have a shirt on. Um, no, but yeah, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say super, super hype um, but that we got a guy like Reddick. It's, dude, it's, 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 it's awesome. Like, and, and for, and for what, for, for a third round pick in 2026, that's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely nice to see, like, we're not giving up a crazy asset or something like that. Like 2026 third round pick. And if he winds up falling out, maybe the Jets get a comp pick back for him. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, dude, if there's if there's any position that I'm not worried about whatsoever, it's defensive mm -hmm. line. Like, like the oh, 100 percent. Like some of the, like when we signed uh, who was it, Kinlaw and Lakey Fotu, and people were like, "Fire JD, we need O line." <laughs> like, dude, come on, like we like we still like we still also needed the uh, defensive line. Like it just wasn't. It's not the biggest need, but like it's a need, you know. Oh, for sure. Now, what are your thoughts on like the whole? You know, why didn't we just keep Huff in general versus going after uh, Reddick? I mean, I mean, like it's the same. It's like pretty much the same as you're saying. You know, it's a, it's a two it's a two way street. Like he wants he he has to he has to want to stay here too. Mm -hmm. I feel like like I, a lot of the comments that I've been seeing this a lot, especially off season. I mean, it could be like casual comments, and I mean, like I'm not like I'm not saying I'm I'm not trying to say I'm an expert because I'm I could be like pretty casual about some things too. But it's like, dude, like we this isn't Madden. We can't act like we're gonna get every single every single free agent, every single thing that we want. It doesn't work like that. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, guys have their own personal feelings. Like Clowney wanted to be home. He was from Carolina. So him going home on, you know, potentially, I don't know if that was considered a discounted deal or people thought that was an overpay. I actually I like the Clowney deal, the two years, uh, 24 million dollars. I probably would have preferred that as a free agent deal over over Reddick, if I'm honest, but I'm not going to be upset with the trade compensation. I just the 16 million dollars is a little odd if it's just the one year kind of sitting on. Yeah, I mean, listen, like, like I'm, I'm just, I, I just want to let JD cook. I just want mm -hmm. him to, you know, do his thing, and it's, it's been all right so far, you know. And 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 I'm not trying, like, I'm not one of the people that's like, that's like build a JD statue, but mm -hmm. like, you know, like it's his, his work's cut out for him. Either he, I like, you know, he and Salah, they gotta, they gotta build the team, they gotta win, or, or they're out of here. I just have one more thing that I want to add about the, the sure. draft. I don't under, I, I seriously don't, don't get like uh, people, people's people's thoughts of, of getting, of getting anything. I mean, listen, like I would be okay with, with uh, uh, like anything on the offense in the first round. Mm -hmm. I just don't get the people that like believe like our offensive line is fixed with Tyron mm -hmm. Smith and Morgan Moses and the additions. Like, yeah, on paper it looks great, but uh, I know my time's almost up, but like, that's all right. I'll respond to it real quick. As far as like the yeah. offensive line goes, like there's definitely concern. We, we have our starters plugged in, but $5.5 .5 million for Mogus, Mor Morgan Moses could definitely be a backup level type contract if they wanted it to be. I think you're going to see some potential uh, degraded play from AVT, at least initially coming off the Achilles. Tyron Smith has missed games about three games a season or so the last few years. Now, oh, since 2015, was the last time he played a full season, but he hasn't had season ending injuries and he's played in every single one of Dallas's playoff games. So that's seven playoff games since that time. And he's played in every single one. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah. I just want to, I just want to say, I just want to say, I don't understand people's mentality thinking that, that Rogers would be able to, that, that Rogers, Rogers can't elevate, you know, Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Brees, Conklin, Rucker, the offensive pieces that we have already. And then some depth guy, like some guys in the second or third round, but he is going to be able to elevate Carter Warren, Max Mitchell, Billy Turner, and whatever backups we have right now on the offensive line. Guys, we need to go. We need to go offensive line first round. I mean, be happy with Odunze or something else, but I still think O line first round. But Ryan, thanks for having me on. Thank you for calling in. You've been ejected You're from right the here. cockpit, boys and girls. Call in number is in the live chat. You click on that, you get three minutes. After three minutes, I eject you. I'm going to go over to Jeremy, and then we'll go over to Houston. We'll go to Jeremy first. Jeremy, what are your thoughts? What's up, my man? <laughs> we are a better football team than we were yesterday. We are. We are. <laughs> now, um, what do you think of the trade? I, he's a genius. He's brilliant. That means we have a brilliant GM. I, You know, I'm, I've been screaming it forever. You know, I'm so tired of people yelling out his record. Mm -hmm. I, you know, whatever's going, he's made mistakes. He's human, but 
I still will say it, and I will die saying it. Like, if you look at our roster when he got here, if you mm-hmm. looked at – we were an expansion team. And mm-hmm. here we are a few years later since, the, you know, he really took over. It's been three to four years since he's really been in charge. And mm-hmm. I feel like we can contend for a Super Bowl. I really do. Um, a lot of it has to do with health. We just have to stay healthy. It's going to be big. Now, as far as, like – Reddick, is it one year, 14.5, that the, the Eagles are going to eat the, the bonus, I guess, is what I'm told? Yeah, we just would be responsible for the base of the $14 million. The, okay. the, the, I am expecting, uh, from what everything I'm hearing and what people are saying, it mm-hmm. sounds like we're going to probably throw that out and just extend him and make a new contract. And he probably won't even cost us, you know, my guess is he won't cost us more than $10 million this season. So what do you think his average annual per year is going to be? Because there, I have a Philly fan in the chat that's been saying he wanted 20 to $25 million a year. And for a 29-year-old edge rusher, I'm going to be kind of salty to, <laughs> to do that for like 50% of the snaps or 60% of the snaps. I don't know. I have, I have you know, you know, I have a lot of doubt from what I hear through the media. And mm-hmm. like, unless I heard it directly from his mouth or his agent's mouth, mm-hmm. then I'm skeptical and i think that's not something, something i'm going to think about too much i mean i think we're going to know soon enough we're going to find out mm. i like it i mean as far as like upgrading your edge you're getting someone who's been far more consistent than huff right now huff you're kind of going on projection where reddick you're you're like okay we've got the production can he just sustain it over these next few years and given what the eagles have done like brandon graham was what 36 37 years old so like edge rushers can age well yeah yeah i mean i see him i mean i'm i'm hoping that we don't guarantee any money past three years. If we get something where it's a contract that we're only obligated for three years, that's perfect. 29, mm-hmm. 30, 30, nothing wrong with that. Now, do you, does this change anything for you in terms of the draft? Um, yeah, it kind of does. Look, I'm going to be okay with offensive line. I'm going to be okay if it's a weapon. Like, mm-hmm. like, I keep flipping back and forth, but I think now that, we probably are not going to make any more moves. And I don't, I, I don't think we're going to have the money to do anything. Mm-hmm. I've started to lean a little bit towards another weapon because I don't trust Mike Williams' health. Yeah, they, Salah came out the other day and said he's not going to be ready for training camp. And if it's on the same timeline as Brees, you're talking about a guy that may not, like his first action may be week one and how much chemistry does he need with Aaron Rodgers to be able to play week one, I think is a, a big you know, potential concern. I like weapon at the top of the draft. I think that that would be a a really nice move, but if you can trade down, get a second, I love the receivers in the second compared to like, you know, maybe the offensive lineman that might be available a little bit later on. Jeremy, thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Boys and girls, Jeremy, Jets chaos. If you don't know him, you better because he is part of the talking Jets channel. Heading over on uh, Wednesday, little or no, sorry, Thursday, little afternoon delight with O'Leary going on. We've got Houston coming up, then we've got Vinny, then Tim from Fishland. Let's go over to Houston first. Houston, how you doing, brother? What's up, my man? I'm hanging in there. How you feeling about the Reddick trade, and what are your thoughts of, like, the Jets roster in general honestly, now heading into the draft? Honestly, I, I, I look at it from a different lens as a former college player. Mm-hmm. Um looking at it looking at it through the lens of look at Jermaine Johnson who he excelled year one Mm -hmm. year two is going to be crazy now that he's going to be able to learn from somebody of of Reddick's caliber having somebody Mm -hmm. like Bryce or or, uh, Bryce Huff there he he was a solid edge rusher he goes to the Eagles on a on a cheaper deal but Mm -hmm. everybody needs to look at it from a perspective of Jermaine's going to Jermaine might be a top five guy now with a, a line of Reddick across from him. You got Ken Law and, and Q in the middle. That's a that's a top five D line, regardless of how you put it. That's a violent D line. There's gonna be a lot of pressure coming off the edges and up the A gap. So it's gonna be really exciting to see. Now, as far as like how much money do you think it's, it sounds like we're gonna restructure him? How much money are you comfortable yeah, giving I, him? I, I, I think I, I, I think you you probably give them eleven to thirteen this year, mm. and then you you give them you give them a, a twelve to sixteen for two years. Mm. Like I don't think it's as bad as everybody makes it out. I don't think he gets the twenty plus deal that everybody thinks he 
he's a solid edge rusher, but by no means is he a a Donald or a, a top. Oh, he's got he's number four in sacks. The last he's, the last he's, he's four seasons. For, he's, he's got top tier production. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, he's about but a thirteen percent pressure team. rate. That was also in it. He was in a top three D line last year. Like that that D line was like stupid you got carter mm. cox like that that d-line was even better than the jets this year but i think the jets d-line this year is able to create so much havoc that mm. you have a top five defensive unit you just and the offensive side of the ball is what you need to address in the draft you don't need mm. to address defense you need to oh, go 100 you, tack- you need to go tackle at 10 and if you see that tackles are falling, then you trade down and you still take a tackle. You mm-hmm. pick up another pick there where you're able to maybe in the late second take a weapon in a deep, deep receiver class. Because, I mean, I, I I love the top tier guys that are there, like a Dunze or, but you got guys in this draft like Leggett from Carolina. Mm-hmm. Like you got deeper guys down there at the bottom tail of the first, maybe early second that you could pick up that just like Brees, you got him at 38. Like he's a top five running back in the league three years in. So how far back do you think the Jets are going to have to trade to pick up a second? And uh, I think you probably drop what is a team coming up for? And the team's probably coming up for a quarterback. So, so you're I mean, so quarterback. You got, you got the Viking. You got the Vikings right there after us, right at eleven. But they think got two the first. You, are, you got to think they, they're jumping they in front have, of the they Giants. Do have two first, but I think they stay put, and they think that McCarthy's going to fall to. Them. I don't. I don't see that at all. I feel like the Giants are the floor for McCarthy. Like they could. Like if the Giants could go McCarthy, then any team that wants quarterback four think, is going to have to jump Drake, into the top five. I think, I think your top. I think your top three is probably locked in with May and um, Daniels and Williams. Mm -hmm. I think whoever that fourth team is, if they strongly believe in McCarthy, then they come up for him. But Mm -hmm. even then you got Penix there that at Washington last year, he was, he was stupid. Everybody's talking about late first, maybe early second for him, Mm -hmm. but maybe that's, that's somebody coming up to get him. So I do think Denver's the most likely team to trade up because they don't have a second round pick and they don't have a quarterback on their roster right now. It's like Jared Stidham's their only quarterback. So I could see them but falling you, for someone. Even if you move, even if you move down from ten, right? You don't necessarily have to pick up two seconds. You can pick up two thirds. Yeah. Of so I, I think second. a second round pick happens right around going down to like pick seventeen or eighteen, and then right. uh, that's probably as far as I'd, I'd feel comfortable moving down. Philly's got two seconds, so if they want to come up to ten, maybe you fall back to twenty-two. Yeah. But that's like that's a pretty yeah. far fall. And I mean, there, there's a lot of weapons in this draft. It it it, it necessarily could be. That the Jets strongly believe that a top four. Houston, you're not wrong, but I'm interrupting you from the cockpit mid sides because I have so many people on the line. Thank you for the call. <laughs> Boys and girls, call number is on the screen. I want to hear your thoughts. You get three minutes. After three minutes, I eject you. I got Broadway Vinny joining the show. Broadway Vinny, how you doing, brother? Doing good. How are you? Hanging in there. How you feeling about this Hassan Reddick trade? Doing good. Um, I actually like him as a player. Um, mm-hmm. like I was saying on earlier, I wasn't saying that Bryce Huff's a bad player. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do like I do like Reddick. Um, my brother is an Eagles fan. Like I said earlier, when we right when the news broke, we would text each other. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's weird how we did swap though, like the Bryce Huff and mm-hmm. Reddick thing. That is kind of weird to me. Right. Um, I would have liked to keep Huff, but Reddick is really good in the run game too, not just in pass rushing. Um, and then uh, now Philly Jake now, in the chat has been a little. Uh, I'll call him a little salty for for an Eagles yeah. fan right now. He's saying that Reddick didn't have any sacks the final five weeks of the season and yeah. was a little bit of like a locker room headache and wants like a twenty to twenty five million a year deal. Is that like yeah. something that you've heard from your brother as well? Yes, he said the same thing. He said that's what I was telling you earlier. Twenty twenty five. Um, he he's looking. He was looking for that. The Eagles just didn't want to pay that. Is what it sounded like. Mm-hmm. And so they were going to find someone to trade offer. That's why we were able to give up. You got to think that's why we were able to give up such a late twenty twenty six third round pick because they mm-hmm. not not saying they were trying to dump him, but they were they yeah. didn't want to pay that contract and pay Huff in that edge room. There's just too much money laying around the edge room. Um, I still think it's a good move though. It's going to help us a bunch. Like, like we've been saying, it's going to help out Jermaine. It's going to help out with McDonald. It's going to help all these players. And then we we you know looking at it, Quinnen, Kinlaw, mm-hmm. Reddick. Jermaine, like that defensive line is stacked, you know. 
loaded. Now, does this change anything for you for the draft at all? Not for me. I originally still want to go offense regardless. I want to go receiver. Mm -hmm. I only say that because me and you talk about the same thing. I like Warren enough mm -hmm. where I think he's okay being that left tackle too. Mm -hmm. If something would happen to Tyron, for, even if it's just a couple games. Um, yeah. I like Mike Williams, but he is a little bit – we have a little bit injury concern with him. If you look at that, though, you have Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams. If Mike Williams goes down, you're back to what you had last year. You didn't have mm -hmm. much at wide receiver. That's why I think they should either go receiver or Brock Bowers because Brock yeah. can at least play that wide receiver tight end role if you really want him mm -hmm. to. And you can still have Jeremy Rucker and Tyler Conklin on the field playing actual tight end then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 100%. You could have Bowers be the big slot, and it's that that type of receiver that Aaron really you know tends to gravitate yeah, towards. That hip drop tackle – I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to be that much, you know, because it only happened, let's say, handful I think it was times 200, 230 times out of 12,000 tackles, so it's like yeah, a 1% exactly. tackle. I don't think people are going to really switch up the way they're tackling. It's just, like, you look at the Mark Andrews injury. I was looking at that one. That's the only one where you're like, how would you stop a guy like that getting into the end zone unless you do that tackle? Like, there's no other way, yeah. you know? And you're going to take the penalty and stop the touchdown. That's it's, yeah, exactly. it's no different than, like, a holding penalty on, like, a sack or, like, a... Uh, you know, pass interference on like what would be a touchdown, you know, yeah. play. similar, yep. similar mindset. Yep. Uh, so are you, where would you go with the third round pick third? Then I would get either interior guard um, mm. or, you know, if I'm not going to say go defense, but you could, you could use that anywhere. I think that third round pick mm. you could use literally anywhere. Um, but before I get out of here, I want to say shout out to my mom. Cause she watches at home. Shout out to my family and little Penelope out there. So uh, thank you for having me on. I love it. Thank you so much, Broadway Man. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Ah, always good. Always good. Very excited. Very excited. All right. We've got Tim from Fishland coming up. Tim from Fishland. How you doing, brother? It's a lot better when I saw the news today. My buddy is an Eagle fan. He's like, no! He's probably pissed but off. I'll tell you what. Tua, Tua and Josh Allen have been put on notice. Mm-hmm. This okay. Rush is gonna be you filthy. look at the D line. There's first mm -hmm. round picks all around the D line. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have better secondary and linebacker players than the Eagles do. Okay, mm -hmm. so this allows us to completely focus on the offense. Now, listen, I love all you Jeff fans. Trust me, I'm a huge mm -hmm. Jeff fan too. But one of the biggest problems that we've had the last few years is depth at the O line. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't know what – everybody keeps talking about Tyron Smith. At least Tyron Smith's played mm -hmm. the last two years. What about sure. ABT? Don't know what he's going to be. Coming off what of the What about ABT? Sure. Okay. So depth is the biggest thing. You win in the NFL based off the line of scrimmage play. Mm -hmm. Whoever's more physical at the line on both sides of the ball usually wins the game, I would say, mm -hmm. seven out of ten times. Mm -hmm. You have an all pro running back, a hall of fame quarterback, mm -hmm. protect and block is the biggest thing for me. And it will always be, listen, receiver with ha having Rogers gives us the ability to make a good receiver. Great. Because of mm -hmm. his ability to put the ball in spots sure. that make it catchable. Okay, mm -hmm. you don't have to go out and get these guys. And the thing is, if you take a receiver in the first round, okay, yeah, Rodgers might be gone, and, but you got to pay Garrett. You can't pay two big receivers. You can't do it, especially with the money that they're making. You can't mm -hmm. do it. It's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's impossible almost. Now, okay, AJ Brown's going to be gone from Philly next year. Like I can you, guarantee like they, you that. What happens if they go Bowers at 10? That's what I, I don't think want Bowers. End up. Mm. I don't Why want Why not? I don't Just want him. I think end. he's undersized. Mm. I think he's undersized. I think the only way I consider taking him is if they got a draft call for a quarterback at ten and traded mm. back to the late the late twenties. Okay, he's that's the that only <laughs> way I consider <laughs> taking him. Mm. Okay, I have never seen. Tell me when you saw a tight end that mm. was drafted in the top ten be an actual difference maker. Well, I think there's okay. probably some asterisks, right? Like, would you would you take Kelsey in the top ten if you knew what he would become? Would yeah. you take P Laporta? Yeah, in the top obviously, 10 but you don't know that. Okay, I mean, you don't know that, it's and an it's evaluation, not. It's right? not. It's not a premier position. That's it is my if you thing. hit. It's got to be a hit. hit that's the biggest thing. But 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 you know that that's like, like what me if we draft back telling tell, tell the blackjack the blackjack holder to hit on nineteen. 
Yeah, but the the offensive line's not guaranteed to hit either. Like you could go with like what you think is going to be a, a top yeah, end offensive depth, line and get Becton. You, all right, you have your starters, but depth is the biggest thing. You see how we have depth on the O line or on the D line. Sure. We need to have the same depth on the O line. Okay, like it's it. imperative. Yeah. I'm not gonna be upset with offensive line. I'm excited to see what happens. Tim from Fishland, you've been ejected You're from the here. cockpit. Boys and girls, call a numbers pin to the live chat if you'd like to call in. I'm going to Austin right now. Austin, how you doing, brother? That is Austin ceiling. Austin. All right, Austin. I'm gonna send you out of there. We're gonna go from Sunny from Long Island. Sunny, how you doing, brother? Hey, Ryan. How are you, man? Austin, I'll go back to you after this uh, call. I'm doing pretty good, Sonny. What are your thoughts on the uh, on the trade? I I love the signing. I think it's great. Uh, I was really heartbroken over losing Huff, but uh, this this kind of made up for it for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, glad to see that they uh, you know brought in the other pass rusher. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Ryan, as as far as the draft, you know, one, of the, one of the three big tackles uh, are most likely going to be on the board at by 10 still yeah it sounds like tackle two is probably going to be on the board so whether that's olu fashanu jc latham talisa funga one of those guys someone at offensive tackle the second one probably comes off the board at 10 at the earliest is what it looks like right right uh i i would love if they take one of the tackles mm -hmm. if for some reason those those three main guys are gone mm -hmm. uh they should go receiver and then just get a tackle later at, at some point in the draft. I do like all three receivers, uh, neighbors, Odunze and Marvin Harrison jr. I would take any one of those just cause I don't love what Mike Williams might be at the start of the season. And I think you just load up on weapons. I'm not as concerned about Tyron Smith missing with injury, but I can understand wanting to have like an heir apparent to the one year contracts we currently have on the outside of the offensive line. Yeah. I, I think we're, uh, I think we're uh, one step closer to getting the Aaron Rodgers season <laughs> that, I hope that so. we were promised last year. <laughs> we need it. We need it. We need it. Now, do, I guess when you think of uh, the the first round, like the top 10 picks, do you think a quarterback slides to 10 that we can trade out of, or do you think it goes before the New York Jets and we're looking at maybe a quarterback five if we're trying to move down? That would be... Uh, a really exciting opportunity if that it presents itself one of those QBs to slide to 10 mm -hmm. and I mean but if 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 the tackle is there you got to take one of those guys you got to do it mm -hmm. I, that's, I, that's I think the, the tough part for area. me is like I hope not to see this tackle the entirety of, <laughs> of next year now it's probably unlikely given some of the injury history that we have but right. uh, I like the last caller said you got to fix the offensive line you win in the trenches and you have uh, a situation where you have a, a Hall of Fame quarterback, you got a, a, a stud running back. If you're really going to run the ball, ground and pound, and that's going to be your your lifeblood, then maybe you don't need that extra wide receiver. Maybe you're cool with uh, a Garrett and maybe a split out wide Conklin or Ruckert or Mike Williams once he's like healthy and ready to go. Maybe they don't need the Absolutely. depth of wide receiver. And I, I don't, uh, I wouldn't take the tight end either. I think mm. to just to simplify what the other guy was trying to say. Mm. It's just a boomer bust uh, position, you know. Mm. E either they're they're awesome, they're great players, or or they end up just being a bust. So that's that's the only reason I would stay away from tight end. Got to risk it for the biscuit, Sonny from Long Island. Thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Let's go back over to Austin. Austin, how you doing, brother? Good. What's up, bro? Hanging in there. I'm feeling pretty good about this trade. Feel a little bit better. It's not the 16 million I thought it was. Sounds like it's 14.5 million. Just the base salary. 2026 third round conditional pick. Not too bad either. What are your thoughts? It's on four. It? It's 14. What? 14.5 million for this year. It's a one year contract right now. Unless they restructure him and he and he gets uh, a different deal. From the Philly fans mm -hmm. that have called in, it sounds like he wants 20 to 25 million a year, which is a, a little concerning for me. <laughs> I hope he doesn't get that. Mm -hmm. What did Huff get? Huff got seventeen million a year for three years. 
Yeah, I'd rather have Reddick than Hup, though. I I would because mm. he's we don't really know if Huff could play the every down. I know Reddit can. That's fair. I think we I think we've seen the ceiling that Reddick is and we really like that. Like you you can feel comfortable with what he has produced in the NFL so far. With Huff it's a little bit more projection. Um I do think if you have a better offense, Huff would have had way more than 10 sacks, but I think Reddick on the same token is going to have way more than 10 sacks for that same reason. Yeah, that's fair. I think we, I think we could go Bowers now though. And I, you, you could be okay with that. I still like Fuaga. I think he's my favorite player in the whole draft. Mm. I like a lot of the the right tackles specifically. I, I would be fine with Fashanu if they want to go that route, but I like someone that gives us that guard tackle flexibility because it gives us the insurance for ABT. It gives us the insurance for Tyron Smith. It pushes Morgan Moses. It pushes John Simpson on the the interior lines. Like it, basically a four player backup at, at a, you know for the next five years on a five year contract. I uh, I like you, that route. You could you could go Fuaga in the first though, and then go Zinter in like the fourth, and then I, you still get the guard play. Yeah, so I like Zinter in the fourth a lot. I've been on Zinter probably since the end of – like right around Thanksgiving when I released my mock. That's that's someone I definitely would like to uh, target. He doesn't give you the positional flexibility maybe that some of the other guys might give. I like Bowers at the top of the draft, honestly. I think that's where the Jets are going to go. I think they're going to go with like, hey, we have starters at all these other positions. Let's go out and get like a weapon that we don't have. This is a home run threat. They were looking at a Michael Mayer. Last year, they were looking at Jameer Gibbs last year. Some type of home run talent. I feel like Bowers is that type of talent, I think. And then you could, you could still get Pearsall or one of the Washington kids, McMillan or Polk, Polk in the yeah, third. Polk. Yeah. I like Polk a lot. His route running is clean. Mm-hmm. I like receiver in the third a lot more than I like offensive lineman in the third. I start to get a little squirrely about the offensive lineman. If they feel comfortable with Carter Warren as backup, I like our draft a lot more. Well, heck yeah, man. Uh, I'll let you do your thing. Thanks for hearing me out. Take care, Ryan. Thank you, Austin. You have been ejected from the cockpit. All right, we'll go over to Joe, then Cameron, then Robbie. So let's go over to Joe first. Joe, how you doing, brother? Hey, Ryan. How you doing? How are you feeling about this trade? We got a little bit of lag here, so I'm going to let you talk, and then I'll uh, I'll give it a few seconds, then I'll respond. No problem. I thought I was seeing things. I thought it was another Reddick. I was like, <laughs> it can't be the guy from Philadelphia. There's no way. And we got him for a pretty good deal. Third round pick, conditional, like you said, it could go to the second round. Mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, that was a great move. The nice thing is it's 67.5% of the snaps and 10 sacks. So he would really have to ball out for that to elevate to a second round pick in 2026. Now, I guess the, the, the only concern for me is what does the contract end up looking like? If he was looking for 20 to 25 million a year, it does give me some concern. I hope he does. He's not getting that. He might get 20 million because he has a proven, you know, track record. Unlike Huff, he only really had one good season last year. The year before that, you know, he did good, but, you know, he only had a limited play. He played a little more last year. Mm-hmm. And he got 17 million, so you got to figure at least 20, 21 million. Yeah. You know, if they sign him, which is a lot yeah. of money. <laughs> it is a lot. It's a lot more than I wanted to invest on defensive line, especially when it's not like a younger player. Like 29 years old, he is getting up there. Edge rushers do age pretty well. Like, we've seen some pretty good production mm-hmm. out of, I mean, heck, just from Philly sure. alone, Brendan Graham, like, he's with good 36 yeah. or something along those lines. Yeah, I mean, look at Jason Taylor when he was on the Dolphins. He was pretty good in mm-hmm. his latter age. Yeah, we had but him for, what, his yeah. final year of the season or one of the last few years. He was pretty solid with us. Yeah, he was. I mean, the draft, really, I'll tell you what. We talked last week. I wanted Bowers. But if Harrison Jr. lands to us, we have to pick him, obviously. But uh, Nabus, I like him. I think he's very good. I think he's going to be a good wide receiver. But I still will go with Bowers. Over neighbors. Not over so Harrison Jr. I disagree with you there. If any of the three wide receivers fall to us, I like them a lot. And maybe you argue Odunze is a little bit redundant uh, to Mike Williams and Lazard. So maybe I could understand if you wanted to go a different route there. I'm fine if we go with Bowers. I think Bowers is going to be the selection, mainly because I think Marvin Harrison Jr. and neighbors both go too early for the Jets. I don't think they get past six, honestly. But he's almost like a generational tight end. 
Or Ryan? That's what I've heard. And that's kind of like, it, that moniker always scares me, but at the same time, he's got like so many forced missed tackles and it's kind of a position, not that we're weak at, but that, you know, he could be that big slot. He could be like a different type of player. And if you have that opportunity to bring in someone like that. I, I, I could go your route. I have no problem mm. with that. But there's, there's good receivers you can get in the later rounds. I like you the know. third round receivers a lot. That's why I, I, I do yeah. lean a little bit. Yeah. I flip flop back and forth. I feel like every day I wake up and it's like, okay, I want offensive line at 10, but it's like, oh, but I don't want to see that guy. And I would love to have someone that's like going to play day one. But then just uh, one last thing. Yeah, let's go. If we could, if we could trade down, like you said, we can, I mean, uh, trade down, like we could get maybe something with like the 18th, 20th pick and get mm -hmm. a second round pick within the first mm -hmm. 10 picks in the second round. I would do it. I hope so. I, the, the Colts at 15, the tight, uh, the Jaguars at 17 and then the Eagles at 22, those three teams all seem to be looking for a cornerback. And if they want to come up to 10, maybe you can convince one of those teams to give up. If you give up a second round pick and slide down to 15, you still might get Bowers at 15. Potentially that would be wild. I would love that. Yep. Trade down. Joe, thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. All right, let's go over to Cameron boys and girls. If you would like to call in, the call in number is linked in the live chat. Uh, Taking calls, three minutes on the clock. Let's go over to Cameron. Cameron, how you doing, brother? Good, how are you? Feeling pretty decent. I'm feeling a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable as I talk to more people about this particular trade. Yeah, uh, how are your feelings on it right now? I saw the trade come across. My first response was, holy shit. Because, mm -hmm. like, I didn't even know he was available. And I think anyone who's watched any NFL knows what Reddick is capable of. Sure. I mean, not just the sack numbers, but he seems to affect his side of the line pretty pretty strongly so mm -hmm. i was happy to see it i mean part of me wonders for that money why didn't we keep huff but you know you mm -hmm. can't go back sure. um because huff was a known commodity in our you know in in-house you know mm -hmm. what you got with him you built him to what he is and it's like if you're gonna pay this guy 14 whatever why wouldn't you just mm -hmm. pay huff a little bit more and keep him but mm -hmm. um as far as the draft goes i mean I'm I'm all in the Bowers camp. I think Bowers mm -hmm. is the way to go. Um, but if someone like Harrison falls to seven, I think we have to trade up because Harrison mm -hmm. is that much of a generational talent that mm -hmm. seven is not that far to go up. And yes, we'd be giving up more of the draft capital, but I think he's worth it. Mm -hmm. You pair Harrison with, and this is obviously a pipe dream, but you mm -hmm. pair him with Wilson. I think you could really have yourself quite a dynamic duo for a long time. It would be um, wild to see that. Now, as far as, yeah. like, um, the, the the receivers and how it may fall, like, I guess where, where do the quarterbacks go for you in the draft? Like, we all assume one through three. Do you think J.J., like, makes it to the Jets and we can trade down from there? Or I, no, I don't – I'm not I optimistic see, for it. I see the Vikings trading up to where the Chargers are to get mm. J.J., because mm -hmm. given what their roster is currently stacked like, why wouldn't you get a quarterback who mm -hmm. is a little more mobile than Kirk Cousins? Clearly accurate. You saw that at Michigan. He's clearly mm -hmm. at pro coaching. We know what Harbaugh can do. So, you know, I see him going there. I can see Drake May. Um, I see him going to Washington. Mm -hmm. And then um, I Jayden see the Patri going to Patriots. Yeah. I could I could also see the Patriots taking like a receiver or something and just running with Jacoby Brissett for a little bit because I don't know if the way their offensive staff is currently constituted if they mm. feel they can like lift a young quarterback. Yeah, I mean, well, they had Brissett for at least I think he's got a two year contract, so they could Correct. like slow roll a quarterback if they wanted to do that. I would love the situation where they go wide receiver because then I think that means a quarterback could be available at 10 for the Jets to trade down. The Giants are really that team that I I feel like if one of the top four quarterbacks fall to them, I think they'll take one. Um, yep. So I don't know. Man. I can we'll see, see Daniels ending up with the Giants if he falls there. That would be – I like – Jordan uh, – Jaden Daniels is my favorite prospect as far as quarterbacks go in this draft. And then I would say Penix is my – like maybe safest quarterback, but also like the injury concerns are like way too much for him. I, if it's, if, if you could guarantee a team like trade up to the back end of the first to get Penix, I think that's the route I'd prefer. Like the giants, maybe going up from their second round pick into the back end of the first. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to I, see. I Penix with the Seahawks though, given they have his that offensive coordinator from college. 
-hmm. He doesn't have to go that far. There's a comfort level there. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he can work in that weather. So Mm -hmm. why not, you know, why not make it an easy transition for him and almost not guarantee success, but give yourself Mm -hmm. a a better chance at it. Uh, Then a lot of guys are walking. Hey, Seahawks, come on, trade up. We'll take DK Metcalf in a move up. (laughs) Why not? I don't know if we get that. Thank you so much for the call. I like that Seahawks thought, though. That's a good move. I hadn't considered that. Oh, I'm excited to talk to this person. I haven't talked to you in quite some time. Mr. Robbie. Miss Lankett. How you doing, brother? Holy shit. I got no brightness in here. J- That's Ryan, right. How you doing? I'm hanging how in there. Doing? I'm feeling pretty good. What are your thoughts on this trade? Love the trade. Um, I The way I see it is we would all hope Ricehoff can turn into Hassan Reddick in the future. Joe said, fuck mm-hmm. it. Let's just get him right now. Mm-hmm. Last time he had elite interior D-line play, 2022, before Fletcher Cox is over the hill, 16 sacks. You can't deny that. I don't think mm-hmm. he was nearly as good as Quinn Williams has been mm-hmm. as of late. So I think that should work out. So I'm excited mm-hmm. for it. I'm really excited for the draft. No, what I do like you want to do at the top? That's what I'm excited about. What I want to do now mm-hmm. is I'm thinking go sign Cameron Fleming, Charles Leno, get a veteran D tack or offensive tackle. Mm. And then we can look towards tackle later, allow him mm-hmm. to develop rather than say, oh, shit, someone got hurt. Well, here we go all over again because, you know, they can either be great or Kenyon Green just happened a year or two ago. Kenyon Green's mm. a master class of trash. So no <laughs> avoiding that. So as much as tackle sounds appealing, I'm leading either Rome, mm-hmm. Bowers, you know, a playmaker there. I know everyone says mm-hmm. trade back for mm-hmm. the same reason we want to trade back. Teams mm-hmm. won't want to trade up. They want as many swings of the bats in a loaded draft class mm-hmm. as possible. Load up their rosters just as we want to. So, you know, you got to think mm-hmm. of it from that perspective. Not every team's out to help New York. Um, mm-hmm. I completely well, agree. I think the trade down option, I, I would love to trade down. I don't think there's going to be a quarterback there that someone's going to want to give us like enough it's for. Hard. Um, love Rome for everyone that is like so against Bowers. Oh, I dude, I love Bowers. <laughs> It'd be a fucking travesty if we got the leading receiver on a two-time national champ who had a mm-hmm. five foot three and a half, 122 pound, 36 year old Stetson Bennett throwing to him. He, in the SEC, everyone knew where the ball was going for Georgia in big moments. Couldn't stop mm-hmm. him. Leading Dude, receiver, it's... two-time national champ. And I, I, I guess no one watches college football anymore. He probably mm-hmm. played 75% of snaps in the slot. He would be mm-hmm. our third receiver, our first tight end. Mm-hmm. If Garrett Wilson, God forbid, with our injury mm-hmm. line, got hurt and we had Mike Williams, Alan Lazard, and Xavier Gibson, that would be about as fun to watch as someone uh-huh. playing Ferris with a narcoleptic dog. Like, it would be, oh. it would be <laughs> a, a travesty to go and watch that. I'm all for a veteran because, mm-hmm. you know, an established veteran um, who can hold their own mm-hmm. is a safer bet than hoping and praying to God some rookie would come in. If we do go tackle, mm-hmm. I like Fontenot out of mm-hmm. uh, Washington, inside-out yeah, versatility. Yeah. A lot of mm-hmm. snaps under his belt, but no, nah, I think play Mac, playmaker. This move proves it's an all-in move, mm-hmm. all-in season. Get a guy that can go, go all in. You know, it'd be cool if we could get Kelsey or Kittle in our offense. That'd be, be pretty neat. Right? You know, and you those tell- Green Bay and sets back in the day. I mean, why not have it over here for for a cup of coffee? Why not? Dude, I've been telling people for forever. They're like, oh, well, Kelsey and Kittle, they go in these later rounds. It's like, well, yeah, but if you knew what they'd become or you thought you knew what they'd become, they'd be a top 10 pick every damn day. We Bowers, anymore. that's just it. If Bowers can be that, if you think that's what he is, take him at 10, never look back, and that's a starter. I look at Bowers. He's wide receiver four for me right now. Ooh. You know, behind, I would say three, four. You know, Roman mm-hmm. him could be three A, three B, because he is he receives the ball more than he is just playing in line tight end. Everyone says, "Oh, we got Tyler Conklin." You all told me we had Michael Carter. We still took Brees Hall. So, like, yep, <laughs> your logic sucks. That's the argument, Robbie. Thank you so much for the call. Good, Good to talk you. to you. You're out of here. Good stuff, dude. Ah, always fun to talk to some old camp campers from the old rec camp. Nice to have you in there. All right, let's go over to Anthony. Then I got Dano, then Tom. Anthony, what's up, brother? Let's go, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, How you feel about look, this trade? I feel awesome. Like, we got our pass rusher. And also, what I looked at it, 
And we have to remember, Reddick is not just a pass rusher. He used to play linebacker mm. also. He used to play, I think he, he was he a middle linebacker when it come, came out? I think he was. Oh, let me see. I'm not actually not Lucker. sure. I know they had him at, so they had him at linebacker, then left outside linebacker in Arizona. So he definitely played more linebacker. And I guess he's still listed as a linebacker with Philly and Carolina too, at least according to pro football reference. Uh, but we're getting an so edge, like edge present. Pass rusher, so like, you could put him, you, you could do like a bunch of stuff with him, a little mm-hmm. more than Huff. But also, like obviously, Huff was amazing. Mm-hmm. But now let's see the now let's see the, the, the contract we're gonna give him. Also, like it mm-hmm. can't be over the, three years, and mm-hmm. hopefully, it's not like twenty five mil. Really. Yeah, I, the one Philly fan in here saying twenty to twenty five mil that doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> That's a little yeah, bit more yeah. than I want to see. I I would think we're gonna align his contract with our two year window. Uh, at least give us the flexibility after two years to resign Garrett and Sauce and JJ. That's how I'm I'm hoping we start moving these contracts around. Yeah, honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, screw it. We have two years of Rodgers. We're going all in. We're winning the Super Bowl this year and next year. I don't care. <laughs> Dude, wait, is, so what do you think? That's all we want. That's all we want. So what's the, uh, with that mindset, what's the pick at 10? Bowers. Bowers. Uh, see, Bowers. Okay. Bowers, bro. Bowers. Dude, I, like, I think it's the yeah. right move. I, it's it's a home run threat. They wanted Mayer last year. They wanted Jameer Gibbs last year. So that tells me they're looking for another home run type threat on the uh, on the offensive side and bowers is that especially if odunze isn't there odunze is the other yeah. one that i would like consider at that pick it would just be a little redundant with him and cobb and and williams i think the only wide receiver honestly i would take over would probably be neighbors or marvis harris harrison juniors mm-hmm. on odunze i can i could like probably skip on him and take mm-hmm. bowers instead mm-hmm. now if they're both on the board it depends on it depends on what we want to do offensively what's cool mm-hmm. with bowers is that you can leave him inside to lock you can put mm-hmm. him at H back. You can put him at wide receiver three. Like you put him so as a many, damn kick returner with, with this new rule. <laughs> like Odun- if you get Odunze, he's playing wide receiver three. He's not gonna block for you. Like he's gonna block on the run a little bit, but not. He's not gonna be inside blocking. Like I feel mm-hmm. like Bowers would be just the perfect fit right mm-hmm. now. Like if it were, if it's a win now like a move. Quarterback, I would say mm-hmm. pick Odunze. Mm-hmm. But we have like a two year window. Let's mm-hmm. just load up. Let's just load up with some a player that can block, pass, catch, whatever. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll have like a Gronk. Like we, we haven't had like a Gronk in like what? Ne- never. Ever, we'll- at least since I've been watching. Like I think the best tight end I've been able to see is like Anthony Becht or Dustin Keller. Like really not been a little barren from the tight end room for the uh, the last 20, 30 years. Yeah. Anthony, Dog. thank you so Get much it. for the call. <laughs> You've been You're ejected here. from the cockpit. All right, we got Tom, then Dano. Tom, what's good, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? How am I over I'm in Scotland? How are you? In there. I'm feeling feeling pretty good. I'm feeling a little more confident. I'm curious to see what the contract ultimately ends up being uh, with Redick, if we resign him or extend him or whatever it is. But I'm feeling pretty decent about this. We got a good edge rusher. Yeah, I really like I really like the trade. I really like mm. Hassan. I think he's going to be a great player. I'm really happy with the the comparison for Bruff, uh, for Huff because mm-hmm. I actually I'm not a hundred percent confident that Huff is going to translate like on mm. another team system. Sure. So actually, I think I think Reddick, you know, I think he's a proven guy. I'm really happy with that. I now, as far as the draft goes, does this change any thought process on in what you would do or what you think the Jets might do in the draft? So not really, because mm-hmm. apart from like reassuring me, we're not going to go defense. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would hope so. <laughs> and I'm I'd okay so with upset. that. <laughs> but uh, like for me, like uh, and this is the question I got for you, Ryan. Is like sure, uh, like. None of the free agency moves make me. Everyone says like Joe Douglas, Robert Salah are all in the hot seat. None mm. of this feels to me like actually these are hot seat moves. Mm-hmm. Like none of this feels like this is panicky. They took their mm-hmm. time at the beginning of the free agency. They've they've spread it out. They've made be really sensible, like long term mm-hmm. kind of thinking. What do you think? I think you are spot on, and you're one of the few people that I've talked to that have actually said this as well. Because I agree. They are operating in the the mindset as long as Rodgers is healthy, they don't care. They're not. They're gonna be here beyond this year as long as Rodgers plays every game of the season. If they're, like they're gonna make the playoffs, the team's far too good. And you look at the way they're aligning contracts: John Simpson, two year deal; Tyrod Taylor, two year deal. Uh, friggin', um, 
I mean, I guess Mo Moses and Tyron are both one-year contracts, but it seems like they're aligning everything, Morstead, Zerline, all two-year contracts. I think they're looking at this two-year window, and given the, the deal for, for Hassan Reddick, they're giving up a pick beyond that window that they could perceivably be here for for the next two years. Yeah, and I, that makes me wonder whether Jody and Salah know they're okay, mm -hmm. and I wonder, like, if what we, you know, I would bet they don't know that they're okay, but I think they feel confident that they're going to be okay as long as Rodgers is okay. Mm, yeah, exactly. So they say no playoff mandate, but mm -hmm. if they do all right, they're going to get another contract. I'm pretty confident, that, and I'm okay with that. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I do like Salah. I do like Douglas. I think they do have to earn the contract through this year for sure, make sure all these things start clicking on all cylinders. Now, before I eject you, what do you want to do at 10? Uh, offensive line, but mm. interior more. So I'm one of, I'm going to say Fatano or mm -hmm. Fuaga. So one of the F boys, as I call them. Ooh, I, I like it. I like it, Tom. You have been ejected <laughs> from the cockpit. Oh, the F boys. That's pretty funny. Let's go over to Dano. Dano, how you doing, brother? How's that putter treating? What's you? up, man? <laughs> I got, hold on, let me, let me show it real quick. People I will, can't see it because I have the topic. I, Boom, there it is. Yeah, good. <laughs> I will be defending my grand prize again this year. Looking for that. Uh, I don't know. Are you doing another one or something different? We, we could do something. I, I haven't really like looked into it too far. I'm just getting back to the golf side of things at work. So I could take a look, see what it is. Maybe we'll do a putter. Maybe we'll do a driver, something a little different. Give you an opportunity to maybe win a driver. <laughs> Maybe a jersey. Eh, we'll right, see. Right. We'll see. Um, yeah, you guys have the you guys have the best draft streams. I I really liked that last year. I mean, anytime you can have me just sitting here on a Saturday for like seven hours and <laughs> locked in, like good content, man. Um, it's a blast. but I wanted I to bring up and I was I just. Oh, dude, I still have videos on my phone of that day, like <laughs> order pizza, you know, mm -hmm. and then did Nightbot. Yeah, oh, that, that's my girl. Uh, incredible. Like I said, incredible. <laughs> she rigged it the right way, man. Uh, but <laughs> so, I, I did just say this on Asmin. Um, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's very like under the radar, but in the last three weeks alone, this is the fourth former first rounder that we've added. Mm -hmm. which to me is bonkers. Um, at least we got we got two on offense, of course, mm -hmm. with Smith and Williams, but we're just we're seasoning our team, I feel like. And mm -hmm. there's that'll a pedigree be key. There. And yeah, yeah. In January, we're going to need like a few months ago, I was like, man, so few of our pass catchers have ever actually known what it's like to catch third and eight, you know, in the fourth <laughs> quarter of a, a do or die game. Like, I feel like that's why we had Cobb. But, yeah, you yeah. know, now we're just up, we're upgrading and I love it. Oh, for sure. Now, as far as when you're looking at the 10 pick, what, what changes for you? Well, everybody wants that little extra piece to take us over the top, but mm -hmm. like me, I'm like, give me the cleats. Let's, let's go play right now. We, we, we have a better team than just about everybody. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I don't think gambling on that last piece, like I don't think it's a last piece. Give me insurance that like what we have will mm -hmm. get to showcase, you know, what they what they are as a team. Give me mm -hmm. another guy in the trenches to back up. I mean, our guys are oft injured. Like we acquired a got a lot of guys that like Smith, if we get Bakhtiari, if they both go down, who's we're going to have someone on that line we don't like that doesn't have the ceiling that a guy like one of those one of those effers would bring, you know. <laughs> I love it, Dano. I'm so excited to have you in the draft stream again, defending champ of the Jets putter. I love it, Dano. You have been ejected from the cockpit. All right, let's go over to Noah. Noah, how you doing, brother? Like what we have, we'll get to show. Oh shoot! What up, Brian? Am I live, man? Yeah, sorry. There's a little bit of a delay from what is like actually going on through YouTube. So you're live right now. 
For sure, man. What are your I appreciate feelings? you letting me in, dog, man. Hey, I'm loving it right now, dog. This is some of the best news I had since, obviously, I was geeked up when the Mike Williams things happened, but a lot of my homies are Philly fans. They've been trolling me about the Bryce Huff thing, so I'm really glad that we were able to secure this this edge rusher, man. It just, it's, you know, added, added, to, added to what we got right now. Yeah, you can't really think about the future when you have to, like, win now. Now, I do, I, yeah. I am, I would be lying if I said, you know, I, I, I wish we had kept tough. I really do. But now that he's gone, you had to fill, fill the edge role in some capacity. And getting someone that yeah. had, what, 20 sacks a few years ago, dude's incredible. Yeah. So I thought that Shady had a really interesting take on this. Mm. Um, I don't think that Joe Douglas is an incompetent GM. Like, he's shown us mm. that he knows what he's doing. Like, obviously, the results haven't shown, but he's shown us what he knows what he's doing it. Shady was like, there's got to be a reason that the Jets didn't re-sign their own guy, right? Like, mm -hmm. it just raises a little bit of a question mark. Like, is there something wrong with Bryce Huff? Not in a health standpoint, but, like, he did do, like, the cryptic weird stuff, like, mm -hmm. maybe in, like, November. Like, mm -hmm. maybe there is a reason we didn't re-sign him. So the fact that you get a proven guy like Hassan, man, like, hats off to Joe. Like, this team's looking so good, dude. Oh, my gosh. Dude, it's studly. If everyone can stay healthy, we're in good shape. I think the Huff stuff was mainly like we didn't try to extend him early enough, and I think he was just burnt on us, and whatever offer we like put out to him probably was not very like good, and I don't think he wanted to sign with us. I think that's ultimately what it wound up being. Why we didn't try to tag and trade him is still beyond me. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. You never know, but look, I, I like what we got. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy with what we got. I'm not going to complain. For sure. Now, what direction do you go in the draft at this point? I'm either taking Bowers at 10 just to get that weapon, and it is a, mm -hmm. it is a need in my opinion, but mm -hmm. um, either take Bowers or trade down and get mm -hmm. a Brian Thomas. I'm so big on Brian Thomas. And, like, so neighbors good. ran 4-3, but, like, so did Brian Thomas. You know what I'm saying? So it's, like, mm -hmm. bigger body, huge radius, man. I don't know. So I, either one of those two things. If, if we do those things, man, I'd be ready to play in February, you know? Dude, I would love to slide down a little bit if we can get the trade down. That's that's really the magic for me because that I like you said, Brian Thomas Jr. I like you know neighbors. I like probably the top four receivers a lot more than some of the other receivers. And then you, then I start thinking like, okay, second, third round at that point. I think Bowers is going to be the pick. That's my gut feeling at number ten. Yeah. So I mean, we'll see how it goes, but uh, can't do any wrong right now. You know, can't do any. No, wrong. definitely not. It's getting me excited. I'm ready for the draft, baby. <laughs> I yeah, love man. it, Noah. You have been ejected <laughs> from the cockpit. Thank you for the call. We got Phenom on the line. Then we got, uh, what was that? They got uh, Bunda. We got Joe Post and Rob, the Jet fan. Let's go to Phenom first. Phenom, how you doing, brother? Hey, I'm, I'm great, Ryan. How are you, man? How's it feeling? I'm hanging in there. I'm feeling pretty good. Jets, I get, Jets got a pretty mean team right now. That's no question. This this offseason has set up this draft wonderful, man. I think, uh, like I said on Jake Adams' show, uh, options is a great uh, situation to have. Uh, I'm not the Bowers guy, mm -hmm. but you know he's a talented he's a talented player. But I'm looking at our tight ends that we have on this roster already, mm -hmm. and and uh, so but with Robert Harrison Jr. with Alt neighbors. I really want the tackle because mm. I'm haunted by the last year. What happened? And the last few that. years, right? Like we, we haven't had a healthy offensive line in forever. It feels like, I feel like 2015 no was the last time we felt confident in our O line. No question. No question. So I think really whatever Joe Douglas decides to cook up, mm -hmm. it's going to probably be a pretty good deal. Or at least we're hoping for that. So if, if I get, if we walk away with Joe Alt, I'm not going to be upset. No, if we definitely walk away not. With Marvin Harrison Jr. Are you kidding me? If we walk, if 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 we walk away for, with Bowers or neighbors, you can't be upset. No, uh, we have the ultimate flexibility at the number ten pick right now. Absolutely, but you know, I want to ask you a question. Do you think sure. we might see a running back? And if we're going to get a running back, who would you think about? You know, because there's guys in this draft mm -hmm. that like. Uh, What's his name? Trey Benson from Florida State. Oh, boy, he's a really good back. So uh, I like running, running back. I, I do like the idea of drafting one. If we had to bring in, like, a free agent, Zeke Elliott, J.K. Dobbins, ones that are, like, interesting, Ooh. I guess. But I like the late-round swing. I would love a Frank Gore Jr. 
Um, I know Green Bean's high on Carson Steele. That would be an interesting selection. Um, there's What's a kid from Wisconsin from? that's name is escaping me. Something Allen. Brandon Allen? Braden Allen? Um, yeah, Brandon Allen. Yeah. Um, the guy from Missouri, um, Schrager, you know, hmm. Missouri. He's I have not guy. watched him. I'll be honest. Yeah, okay. But, well, we know this is not fantasy football. So, look, mm -hmm. whatever happens, I mean, it all depends on how the board falls to in this draft because there's going to be moves made and mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But uh, getting back to your dra draft stream a couple of years ago, that was some of the best YouTube. Oh, <laughs> dude, yeah, the, the, you you're talking about the sauce, delay, Garrett. You guys want to delay? Uh, Unbelievable. Dude, the sauce. Brees Garrett draft was like hands down the most fun I've ever had at a draft like event. That was that was great. If that happens this year for us and and we win, oh, it's gonna be Ugh. a special year because Be last year was a disaster. I'm there with you. You've been ejected from the cockpit. <laughs> Phenom, if you guys haven't been a part of the draft stream, you got to make sure you hang out with us in the live stream. It's a lot of fun. I've got uh, Bunda. Joe, and then Rob, and then we'll probably wrap it up there. Let's go over to Bunda. How you doing, brother? Yo, hey, what's up, man? Hanging um, in there. What's yeah. your thoughts on this trade? <laughs> Dude, it's fucking awesome. I, one of my one of my good buddies who I used to work with is a big Eagles fan. He's texting me right away. He's like, yo, he's going to get you guys 10 sacks this year. That's going to be sick. <laughs> but I, I feel like I'm kind of agreeing with what the other people are saying. Like, maybe it just wasn't in the cards with uh, – with Huff, but what mm -hmm. I'm really thinking is just like, dude, just pick up the tackle. Just pick mm -hmm. up the tackle in the 10. You can trade back, obviously, but let's not get mm -hmm. cute. Let's just, just get just someone to solidify that line. Somebody else said it where it was just like uh, one of the other shows where it was just like, um, like who was, who was fucking the Chiefs, uh, um, second wide receiver? You have no idea because yeah. like, the QB is going to fucking do it all. Just Make pick it up the all tackle, be out. safe. The only way I feel like Bowers makes sense is like, I don't know shit about him, but like, yeah, is yeah. he going to get us yak? Cause I he's feel like really every, good every yak tight guy. end gets yak. So he's, he's a really big yak guy. He was number one in forced missed tackles in college. And he was basically that whole Georgia offense was built around him in the last like two years. So it would definitely be a weapon. And I would look at it more as a weapon more than just a tight end. Cause people are going to like pigeonhole him into that kind of category. And uh, look, I, I would completely understand if they go offensive line, they want to run the ball with Brees Hall. And ultimately, if you can't have the offensive line where it needs to be, a tight end's not necessarily going to be the reason that Hall's able to run through the offensive line. So I, I totally understand with not getting cute and going O-line there. I guess For it depends real. on how For much artists. faith they have in Carter Warren and some of the depth guys that they could be bringing in. I still think Bakhtiari and McGovern come back at some point or come in. I'd like that. I like. I mean, if you can piece two two left tackles together with two stars, our oh, old great. stars, like I mean, you got just do Bakhtiari it. for the for the grass games. You got Tyron Smith for the turf games. Everyone gets their <laughs> rest. It's perfect, right? No, for real, for real. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's just just not getting cute, dude. Just just keep him upright. He's gonna mm -hmm. throw the ball. He's gonna make every. Like honestly, I kind of have a feeling Lazard might have a weird comeback. A weird like just people might are people are writing him off. Mm -hmm. I don't I mean, hey, I get it. I get why you would. Mm -hmm. But like there's a chance where he you know, he, he there's a reason we picked him up and we paid so much money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just what it is what it is. And if not, I would take Corey Davis in a second. He'll be the second wide receiver to start, mm -hmm. moving to the third once Williams gets healthy or, or eases himself mm -hmm. back in. Like I think those are two great options. Those, those would be studs. And if, if Lazard can be what he was in Green Bay with Rodgers and you feel a little bit more confident in it, then I'm like feeling a little bit better because I do think that Conklin is going to be a receiving option ahead of Lazard anyway. And I think Brees is also going to be a receiving option ahead of Lazard. So you're talking about Lazard being like option four when it comes down to like getting the ball out of Rodgers' hands. I feel a little bit more confident, I think, in that. Bunga! I'll see you, man. Ejected from the cockpit. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, so I apologize if that was wrong. Uh, let's go over to Joe. Joe Post, how you doing, brother? I'm good, Ryan. How are you? Feeling pretty good. I'm feeling better and better about this trade as I talk to more and more people. It gets me excited. Yeah, I uh, I was in Chipotle when the trade went down. <laughs> I was driving. I was. We were getting gas, and I go down. I go, holy smokes. Becca's like, oh, my God, what happened? Who died? What's I was like, no, 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 no one died. We just got Hassan Reddick. She goes, I don't know what that means. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> my, my girlfriend was like, oh, she was like, what did the Jets do? You're like, what, did they mess up again? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, no, no, like, no, no, they no. didn't. No, I was like, the they opposite. did something good for once. Yeah. <laughs> I uh I I'm a big Ohio State fan. I really want Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, that'd be I mean, sick. When I so this was the COVID draft when they drafted Beckton. Mm-hmm. I wanted C D Lamb so badly. Uh huh. And I I wanted Lamb or Tristan Wirfs. And then when we mm-hmm. got Beckton, I had to like gaslight myself into thinking, <laughs> Oh, this is a good pick. I mean, it, it was the right position, right? Like I was, I was big CD lamb. I was like, that was my guy in that draft. And then when Werfs and Becton were both kind of there on the board, I, I figured we weren't going to go with lamb either way, but I wanted Werfs as well. I'm, I'm right there with you. So at, you, you're, it, let's say Marvin Harrison jr. Is not there at number 10. Cause I, more than likely he's probably not going to be, he's going to be the first or second receiver off the board. What do you think the most likely position the jets go at 10 is? If they stay at 10. Yeah, I think we all want to trade down. I think trade down is probably the most yeah. popular option among Jet fans, but assuming we stick and pick at 10. I think if maybe one of the – maybe if you go Fulaga. Mm. Um, Going offensive line. Or I, I I really like Bowers, but I feel that – I don't know. I kind of feel like with Rodgers' history with tight ends, it, it might be mm. a little bit of a waste. That's so that is a very strong point that I think people need to at least pay attention to or at least take note of because whether or not Bowers winds up lining up as a traditional tight end or as a big slot that could change things because Rodgers does like the big slot but the tight end position he's had Jimmy Graham Jimmy Graham had 10 touchdowns prior to playing with Rodgers the season before played with Rodgers for two years had a grand total of five touchdowns and then had eight touchdowns the year he left and went to Chicago so Rodgers is not a very big tight end uh you know target i guess he doesn't really love throwing over the middle which is kind of where the tight ends like to like to cook does that create more turnovers and rogers doesn't like that i don't know i do like bowers a lot yeah. they could really go any direction i think i'm gonna be happy yeah they uh i feel like this trade also makes it very flexible mm-hmm. because i mean it's a trade in two years it's a, or it's a draft pick in two years so it's yeah, they, it Douglas mean. and Sal, they're like, we're not going to, chances are, we're not going to be here for this. Like, either we roll two years in a row with Aaron Rodgers and we we ball out, we get a ring, something like that. It all works out, all hunky-dory. And then, great, who cares? It's a third-round pick in, in this following year. So I agree yeah. with you. Joe, you have been ejected from the cockpit. All right, let's go over to Rob, the Jet fan. Rob, how you doing, brother? <laughs> Here we go. Let's go. Let's knock some teeth out. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Yeah, baby. Does this you change your defense. thought process? I love this. Ooh. This okay. A- so does this change your? Th- Sorry. Let me shut up. I'm gonna shut up right now. You talk. <laughs> yeah. This was a great move, buddy. I mm. love getting back. This was sensational. Sensational. I mean, uh, I didn't think we were going to get someone to this magnitude, but mm-hmm. it's been fantastic. I mean, he's really not going to cost that much if we push the money and we re-sign him to a two-year deal. I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to really kill us. So mm-hmm. I think this is a sensational move. Really happy. Did not expect this for nothing. So mm-hmm. um, ecstatic about this. Ecstatic. Does um, this change your all- thought process at the 10 pick at all? What? Does this change your thought process at the 10 pick at all? Oh, uh, uh, 10 pick. I still want an O lineman. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I'm thinking, like, you know, if uh, Fashano's there, I would take him. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love Fuago. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think he's a stud because mm-hmm. I like the way he pancakes people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to lie to you, uh, Ryan. If, if Adunze is there, which mm. is a possibility because I don't think the two other wide receivers are going to be there. If mm. a Dunze is there, I would be very, very tempted to take him. Mm-hmm. Uh, go on record, hell to the no for Bowers. Don't want nobody. Want I've Bo- Bowers is the most polarizing player I've seen for the Jets in a long time. I know you're in love with him. I don't know why. I wouldn't um, say in love. I just think he's going to be the pick based on like the historical trends. I'm totally cool going offensive line. I'm an Odunze guy myself, personally. I would say Odunze, then Bowers, then O-line. 
or trade he down and be my first. His numbers weren't really that spectacular. He played 10 games. He had about a, uh, about uh, 713 yards. He had about six, seven touchdowns. I don't think he's anything sensational. So let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Would you take Bowers over Odunze if both of them were available? I wouldn't. I like Odunze more. I could understand the argument of Odunze maybe being a little redundant to like a Lazard and a Mike Williams. I think Odunze is really, really good. And I like the five years of him. Uh, with Bowers, though, I think the interesting part with him is the the difference and like the home run threat. Like if you're looking for someone that could rip off a long run at any point and score a touchdown, I feel like he is that type of player where maybe Odunze is more like you're hoping to get what Mike Williams ultimately is right now. Um, I agree. I, I could agree. go, but his I, stats or his yeah. stats are just overwhelming. I mean, look, did you see his numbers? They're ridiculous. Six, I, 15, 16 touchdowns. Like, he's mm. got like fifteen hundred yards. I mean, he catches everything. Mm. He's Odunze is a top, uh, top contested catch guy, top deep ball threat guy. So that's really interesting to me. The only thing that like you could argue with Bowers is he's gonna cook a like near the line of scrimmage. So if you do have some fear with the O line, that ball's coming out quick to Breeze, to Garrett, or to Bowers. Where if you have to get someone deeper down the field, that might be a bit of a concern. Let me just ask you one question: Are mm-hmm. you not happy? Conklin and Rucker. No, I, I love mean, them. I, I like both of them. I actually want I want Rucker at fullback, honestly. If you could give me Rucker at fullback, I would lose Bauden. And I like Bowers. But if uh I, I view Bowers more as a wide receiver and a weapon more than I view him as a tight end. So you can still have Conklin and Ruckert on the field with Bowers. Let me ask you a question. If Conklin mm-hmm. comes up with about eight hundred yards this year for us mm-hmm. and he has, I don't know. Anywhere seven, eight touchdowns, would you mm. not resign for another year or two, Conklin? I think what they're waiting to do, I think they're going to restructure him and align him to that two year, uh, mm-hmm. like sort of window that everyone else is going into. So you see, uh, Morstead, Zerline, Tyrod Taylor, uh, John Simpson, like the guys we're bringing in, we're giving them two year contracts, and it seems like they're aligning that to the perceived two year window with Rodgers. I think they wait on Conklin until after the draft, either because they want to take Bowers and would be comfortable having Bowers Rucker next year, or they're trying to shield it and make it look like they're going to take Bowers because they're going to let Conklin go after this year. And they really want to go with the offensive lineman or a wide receiver. And that's the route they're going to go. And they, cause I like, if you could tell me Conklin Rucker going to be our tight ends the next two years and you can solidify the offensive line or like stud out the wide receiver room. I'm cool with that too. No issues whatsoever. I do. Now you said Fashanu. I like, guard tackle kind of hybrid which might bump Fashanu a little bit lower on my list potentially but i wouldn't be upset with having an heir apparent to tyron smith with a you guy like that's Fontenu? been a stud do you like Fontenu? i do i honestly my top option is to trade down if i can trade down i would take that above any other player i think getting a second round pick is more important than whatever player you're going to take at 10 right. and i say think, no to that yeah I and if you, no could, to- I, I, if you could come down to like 12 13 14 somewhere in that realm then i think you could you could argue like bowers at 14 is a little bit more you know better than taking bowers at 10 especially if you can get a second round pick or if you want to go offensive lineman fought now is the one that i really like because it's the guard tackle hybrid it gives you four position flexibility that's the player i want i don't necessarily want to take him at 10 but if they did i wouldn't be upset with it so if they took bowers around mm. 13 4 like you said mm. but then they took the new in like the third uh, second round excuse me you i don't think he's gonna make that. it that far I, I don't think fontanel gets out of the first round i don't know if he even no. makes yeah he's gonna be you would probably you could trade down you probably get him in the top 20 would be my guess okay that's we'll possible. see i like a lot of the receivers in the second round we just don't have a second round pick to get it that's that's where i'm like my issue is if i can get a second round pick have the have the wide receiver picked in the second round and then you're cooking a little be- bit more i like i'm that. going wide receiver that's the mm. way I'm, I'm picking i love it i love it i could go that route too brendan rice there's a lot of receivers in the third round you can like drink that tito's rob thank you so much for calling it you a bit ejected from the cockpit all right boys and girls we're gonna round this up right here hitting on almost two hours on this stream and i'm hungry i want to go get some food uh boys and girls new york jets trade a conditional 2026 third round pick to the philadelphia eagles for Hassan Reddick. I have to update my uh, my little board right here because it says $16 million. It seems like the 
uh, the Eagles are picking up the roster bonus is what people are saying. So it's actually going to be a one year, $14.5 million deal. He's had 50 and a half sacks over the course of the last four seasons. You got to be feeling pretty good about that. You pin his ears back. You say, Hey, Quinn and go up the middle. Hey, Kinlock, go up the middle. Hey, JJ, get on the other side. Let's feast. Let's put Josh Allen on his back Tua, just put him on his back. Dominate the AFC East. I'm looking forward to this. This defense is not going to be stopped. Boys and girls, this is Jets Talk signing off. J-E-T-S.